Uranium stock surging. Azarga Uranium backing that AZZ up. Drill results. Several companies released some impressive results. Bitcoin is pulled back. Gold is still consolidating. Gold stocks are either higher or lower. Very few are staying at the same level. We'll talk about the 126 Republicans that do not seem to care about the U.S. experiment called democracy. We'll talk GMC. We'll talk about the Fort Hood investigation. We'll talk about delayed stimulus. We'll talk about COVID lockdowns. The government continuing to tell people who can and cannot get a shot at surviving this COVID pandemic. I am Gerardo Del Real, along with my co-host, Fight the Fed, Mr. Nick Hodge. This is episode 97 of Bizarro World. A lot going on there, Mr. Hodge. How are you, sir? How was your birthday? It's a fine in situ asset. Won't you back that as uh, <laughs> got me singing now, Gerardo? Get low, low. <laughs> <laughs> Except it's going high, high, man. It, it, Go Azarga. It sure is. That sure is. That was a birthday present. And so um, it was a good birthday week. Thank you for asking. How was how was your week? It was excellent. It was excellent. You know, um, busy, as you know, but but a great week. We have great health. The wife still loves me. The kids are still healthy. Things are good. No complaints. I'm working on the wife. I told you some time ago <laughs> that it could be uh, uh, a gold bull market with a uranium core. And um Gosh, look at it go. Hey, I'll take your gold bull market and your uranium core and raise you a copper bull market as well, which I didn't even mention in the intro. Copper is stubborn at 350 and seems like it'd rather go to four than pull back to three. Yeah, I'm sure we'll get to it. But the thing that um, our neck of the woods, let's call it, has been talking about is, you know, why the heck is other metals going up and gold isn't in the face of what's clearly inflation. I think that is the question on a lot of people's mind as I've seen on Twitter and as I've seen on other articles. And, um, you know, I think it's one of those things where Mr. Dines, you know, says it best. Don't think, look, like you don't got to overcomplicate it. There's is inflation manifesting and, and copper is the perfect example and lithium stocks are the perfect example and the S&P at a record is a perfect example and on and on, right? And it just so happens that, you know, gold isn't benefiting at the current moment, but, you know, there's other factors in play with the dollar and the rates that you and I always talk about. And so, um, copper looks really good. Copper stock's starting to look good. I was writing about Rio Tinto this week and, and, you know, I mean, even those big copper boys have delivered some pretty good, um, uh, annual returns, you know, relative to the, to the S and P for example. So, yeah. A absolutely. And what I get excited about is that there's companies that deserve to trade much higher that aren't and, um, that, that have exposure to both copper and gold. And I think, you know, obviously it's a, it's a combination of factors, right? We have tax law selling season. So if you happen to be one of the few stocks that, you know, maybe people bought a little higher and you're sitting on a portfolio full of gains and you're trying to offset that, um, I, I, I see where some of these stocks are getting hit. Other stocks are being traded as gold stocks, despite the fact that there are predominantly copper stocks. Um, that makes my contrarian heart smile because I know the market eventually will get it. Um, and and again, let's get right into uranium, which I think, you know, is 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 an interesting dichotomy because the stocks are surging. Energy fuels, which we talked about last week, had itself a week. Um, Azarga uranium, which we joked about here starting early. We joked about the AZZ, not the stock, has had itself a week hitting 52-week highs. UEC is at the buck 50 level. It hasn't seen that in quite some time. Yet the spot price remains flat to down. And so we talked about copper sniffing out the inflation. We talked about how gold isn't quite there yet, possibly because a lot of capital is going towards the major U.S. indices, which, as you mentioned, continue to make new highs despite newly enforced government mandated COVID lockdowns. We'll talk about that out of New York City and California. Um, despite the fact that the Senate just had to, pa had to pass a one-week government funding extension because it can't even do its most basic of duties, which is fund the government. It, I mean, this is every year it's this now, and it, it points to just the ineptitude and, 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 and just 
the bottom in what I call what I've referred to as the bottom in the political class, if I could make it into an ETF or a structured product, believe you me, I would. And I would lever up three times plus. Um, so d- d- I thought when you lend money to yourself that the funds are unlimited. <laughs> it's only if you're a corporation and you have a lobbyist, Nick. That's the way that works. And so, you, you know, uh, again, copper sniffing out the inflation, gold will. But again, I think maybe we have another quarter or so of this consolidation. That's that's I, I, I see it on the Twitter sphere, you know, however much of that is real. And I see it in articles and it seems like a lot of the better known gold bulls are getting frustrated, not by the gold price by the performance and the related gold equities, which again makes Absolutely. my, yeah. And that makes my contrarian heart smile because I am loading up on the names that I know at these levels or at much lower levels can do extremely well. And so, yeah, you have to use the weakness to your advantage, everyone. It's called contrarian investing for a reason. And as I wrote this week for Resource Stock Digest, you don't just have to be resource you know, specific. Um, you do a phenomenal job, Nick, of of diversifying across multiple sectors: the Bitcoin, crypto space, the cannabis space, tech stocks, um, all sorts of sectors. So, listen, my 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 bread and butter, my knitting, it's the resource stocks. It's what I love to do. I I I I have for over a decade. I will continue to. You know, my big hedge in my personal. Um, life and, and and my personal investment portfolio. My hedge is real estate. You know, I I, I have you know multiple properties in multiple states and countries, and that's 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 my long term hedge against me underperforming the market in the resource space. If that is indeed what happens, um, luckily that hasn't been the case. But everybody has to hedge differently, and I completely respect you know people taking money from one pot and reinvesting it or reallocating it into another pot. And I think people would be well served to do the same. If you have access to credit, if you have access to cash, um, you know, 30 years, 2.83, it's almost free money. I mean, even, yeah, even if you don't need to borrow, why wouldn't you at this point? Well, lots of people are borrowing, right? And I mean, you know, I'm a generalist. And so um, I go wherever I think there's money to be made. And so I've sort of have uh, rotated a bit as you've seen and as we've talked about and I still own a slew of gold stocks to to be sure but there's um, other sectors of the market you talk about inflation in copper well there's inflation in energy as well I mean mm. if you look at the sectors of the S&P I'm talking about like the 11 sectors of the S&P now right energy industrials discretionary staples etc right uh, real estate uh, you know energy is like the worst performing sector of the year uh, 2020, but it's the best performing sector of the past month. So mm. uh, what you're seeing here is a rotation, right? That inflation is going other places. Um, you, you see natural gas prices up, um, not only because we just had the, you know, one of the worst hurricane seasons on record, but because that inflation is coming into natural gas, you're seeing oil prices going up. You know, uh, you and I have a sponsor on the site, um, you know, reconnaissance energy that has just been on an absolute tear and, 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 and oil stocks have been dead in the water for, um, you know, a couple of, a couple of years now. And so, um, for me, it's, 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 it's prudent to, to rotate. Right. Um, and, and that's, that's just what I've been doing. And, and we could talk about other places, uh, to put money as we go. Cause, cause there's certainly a lot to talk about. I think, like you said, this, this consolidation in gold, <laughs> And it's funny to call it that. <laughs> At 1836. Uh, that, right, you know, exactly, right? <laughs> but that frustration that you were saying with the leverage is real. Because if you put up a chart of GDXJ or GDX against mm-hmm. uh, gold for the year, there's no leverage. It's zero. It's they're, 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 they're one-to-one, right? And that's not how it's supposed to work. And so, um, and another thing uh, you'll uh, see if you, if you play around with charts a lot is that, you know, back in August and September, um, Oil, or yeah, not oil, excuse me, gold and gold stocks were best performing sector of the year, even against tech and biotech. Mm-hmm. Right? If you put GDX, GDX against XLK, um, uh, for example, or, or IBB, the biotech, 
uh, fund gold was winning, but now that's reversed a little bit as these gold stocks have cooled off a little bit. And as tech, frankly, has continued uh, to surge. You talked about the indices at all time highs. And so, yeah, there's 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 different things afoot now than there were three months ago. And and markets are dynamic and, and markets are changing. But the long term trends, I think, uh, are clear for why gold needs to, to move higher and, and ultimately will. Consider this, everybody, nearly 30% of the world's investment grade debt, not the junk, the investment grade debt is now sub-zero, is now negative. Nearly 30%, 27 to 28%. That, that's, that's insane. That's insane. And, and we're having a debate, you know, with the, between politicians about whether, you know, to do $918 billion as a as a as a first step is what they're calling it, and it and again the debate isn't about spending the money; it's just about who's going to get what, as it always is, right? Divvying it up. I love how it's a it's a first step of the second stimulus. It's like the they love their phases, right? This is like the new approach, right? The phases and steps. Stimulus edging. Yeah. Oh God, for for a year now, <laughs> <laughs> something's going to explode. All time highs in the major U.S. indices. I mean, you know, it, it is what it is. I can tell you, you know, I'll per, I'll personalize a bit how hot the, the capital flow is right now. We have a real estate market here in Austin. We talked last week how hey Joe Rogan's on the way, and you know Elon Musk is on the way, and sure some of that Joe Rogan really moved here. He's got a beautiful house on the lake. Elon is probably going to buy property here and make this his primary domicile, but he's going to do that for the tax savings, everybody. Whether or not you know he's here most of the time is a whole another question, but my point is the real estate market in and around the Austin metro area is absolutely on fire. I mean, if you don't have cash and you're not coming in and, and, and you know, I had friends that just bought a property a month and a half or two ago, and they, it took them 15 offers. And they were making o- above full price offers mm. to land a property that, that 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 was acceptable and that they were excited about, um, and they ended up with a beautiful place. But that's 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 capital looking for a friendlier home than negative yielding investment grade debt, right? And again, almost thirty percent of that is now negative yielding. So when we see pension funds and we see you know, trust funds that, that, that had mandates before to stay away from gold. The reason you're seeing a pivot into um, gold a little bit at a time is because there are fewer options out there, right? There is an alternative. It's not a Tina situation, but, 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 but there's fewer attractive alternatives um, across the investing and speculating uh, landscape there. So we'll just leave that there. Speaking of landscape, about, did you see Rudy Giuliani? Yeah. What about Bitcoin? No, well, hold on. <laughs> no, what, what, what about Bitcoin before Rudy Giuliani? Because that's the that's the hot topic right now, right? Well, Why is <laughs> Bitcoin going up and not gold? Are more dollars going to flow to Bitcoin than gold? Is Bitcoin supplanting gold? Um, what else have I been hearing? Um, is Bitcoin less manipulated than gold? Is um, what else? Uh, basically, you know, oh, um, are these institutions we've seen uh, banks and a couple of other um, companies buy by the, the tens or hundreds of millions worth uh, Bitcoin in the past week? And of course, the Winkle buy are saying this is the real deal. It's all rigged, everybody. Oh, by the way, breaking news. Oracle is now moving to Texas. I think I, words are powerful. I'm very careful with my words. And yeah, Oracle's on the way. Um, anyhow. Uh, yeah, no, look, it, it, guys, it's all rigged. The mortgage market is rigged by the Fed. Um, the major U.S. indices, it's rigged. They're rigged by the Fed. Um, you know, the only thing that's not rigged by the Fed is the other 97, 98% of America, right? It's the only, <laughs> it's the, it's only 97 or 98% that don't get to benefit the people that don't have direct exposure to the financial assets that are, that are booming everywhere. So, you know, I, I think the narrative of Bitcoin versus gold, it's an easy, cheap headline. It's an, I, I, I think it's lazy reporting. You know, I, I don't consider myself a journalist. I'm a speculator in the resource space. So I, 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 I'll write about it as it pertains to capital flow. But, you know, for the, for the journalists that consider themselves journalists that aren't speculating in the space, they're actually writers and, and, and they went to college for this and it's what they dedicate their life to. It's lazy journalism. 
you and I have been saying this since 2016. Bitcoin and gold will go up together if they're real sustainable bull markets. And I believe they are, and I think both are, but I also think both are manipulated, as is the dollar, as is the stock market, as are mortgage rates, as is everything else. Um, and we'll talk about manipulation in a bit. These 126 traitorous, treasonous Republicans, and it's not a partisan statement. They're the ones who filed it. So we'll talk about that in a second. But yeah, I think it's all rigged. Okay. I just wanted to have your two cents. I, 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 yeah, I, I agree. To say that gold is manipulated and that's why it's being depressed right now is, I think, a bit of a cop out. I just think at the moment, Bitcoin is trading like more of a commodity. I think it's a pretty clear cut answer, but it's just me. I, I agree with you 100%. And the consolidation has everything to do with rising real rates. Um, it, you know, in, 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 in the currency and the, in the rates in markets. And so let, that's just what it is to me. That's my take on it. What am I doing? I'm using the weakness. I'm thankful for it. And I'm adding to some of my favorite names in bunches, in bunches. I am overweight, quite a few positions. And by overweight, I mean, you know, I should, I, sh I shouldn't have as much as I have, but I can't help myself, Nick. It's uh, you and I had an off air discussion about, you know, with Digest Publishing, we're providing 401k options. And, you know, without putting anyone's business out there, I'll put mine up there. You know, I have my own retirement plans on the side, but I, I, I don't want to contribute to the new plan that we're offering because I already have something set up. A, B, I'd rather take that money and play with it in the market because I think this market, um, I can outperform the, the tax savings, right? And the tax benefits. And so we'll see if that's true. I joke that at 70, if I'm asking you for a loan, I'll be proven wrong. But till then, we're going to make we're going to make some hay. Well, we'll see. And hopefully nobody needs any loans. <laughs> hopefully we're still both around to say yes or no. <laughs> That's right. Yes. All right. Let's talk drill results. We had some results this week from several <laughs> companies that um, the market liked and, and, and some results that initially the market did not like. And then, and then it turns out today the market did like it. So the one that I don't think the market care for, cared for a lot but actually today is up, you know, 10, 11, 12% last time I looked, is Revival Gold. You know, all Revival Gold keeps doing is adding to its heat leach oxide operation and adding to the mine life there. Yesterday, they announced some results. Um, and I joked with Hugh Agro that, you know, the, the, the results, Hugh being the CEO of the company, the results weren't the blockbuster spectacular results that everybody wants to see. And he countered back and he said, well, look, I think 48.5 meters of 0.86 grams per ton gold is, is, is pretty spectacular. And I, I would say they're very good, but let's forget the adjectives. The bottom line is every release that Revival produces adds more value to that project. I don't think the infrastructure advantage um, that the company has is well understood. I don't think the market is appreciating that, you know, when you do, when you report, when you drill 48.5 meters of 0.86 grams per ton gold, and then 36.1 meters of 0.45 grams per ton gold, and it's all near surface and it's all adding to the mine plan, you're adding years to a very economic and already very robust PEA and mine plan. And so, no, kudos to the market today for getting it. You know, after a muted response yesterday, the stock was up nearly 13% today. And so, you know, Revival Gold is one of those names that I would encourage everybody to do some due diligence on. It's a pretty de-risk project. It's past producing. Permitting will be relatively straightforward because it is past producing. Infrastructure is in place. Top-notch team. And, and a CEO that is obsessed with getting the market to realize the value there. And I like it when I speak to CEOs and, and they're upset about their share price. That means they're working as hard as hopefully I am for subscribers when I recommend these names, right? Yeah, you sort of stole my answer with extending the mine life, but that PEA we just saw was sort of a first phase heat bleach, right? And so by the time we get to the next phase of economic studies, as you just said, the mine life is going to be much longer. Look, that's heat bleachable, mineable gold all day long, 0 0.8, 0 0.85, 0 0.86 grams a ton, right? And so, um, your end of the year weakness now, I mean, it's sort of out of Hughes control. It's out of the rocks control that the shares ran up earlier in the year and people bought them north of a dollar, right? I mean, um, well north of a dollar, actually. And so um, people that did that are going to be sellers uh, in this market. And so um, I was writing, it's probably probably been three or four weeks ago now that I was buying more Revival Gold for all the reasons uh, that you said, but, but one to tuck away for sure. 
Absolutely. Let's talk Canisil Resources. That stock um, had a discovery hole that it had, now, it had announced from its Nora Silver Gold project in Durango State, Mexico. A couple of weeks back, the market punished it. It shed quite a bit in market cap terms. And a couple of days ago, it reported there was one intercept up to almost 4,000 grams per ton silver equivalent. It was, um, I, thir- I have it here in front of me. Let me pull it up. 36.7 grams per ton gold and 1,010 grams per ton silver from the candy vein. That's equivalent to 3,671 grams per ton silver equivalent. The market really liked those results. The widths were decent, you know, a, a, a meter and a half, nearly two meters, over two meters in a couple of the holes there. And so, um, you know, for, 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 for them to hit mineralization, um, right off the bat on a new target, on a new project. This isn't even the flagship. The flagship is the Esperanza property, which has you know quite a bit of work already done on it. And so um, kudos to Canisil. Great release, and I'm excited to see what's next for them. It's got a gap to fill on the way up, just like I told you it had a gap to fill on the way down. And so it looks like it stopped right at the gap right now. It needs about two and a half more cents to close it. So if it could do that, um, I think it would be off to the races, just like you mentioned energy fuels earlier. And I don't know why that's stuck in my head because I'm just picturing the chart and that one needed to break through 285 and did so in a big way. And so um, if you can understand a bit of the, um, the fundamentals and the, the results and how that relates to some of the technicals, you have opportunities, right? Absolutely. The last free name I'll put up there for everybody is K2 Gold. It, it announced some spectacular results, nearly 87 meters of over four grams per ton oxide from surface in California. Um, the Mojave Gold Project, high-grade oxide gold project. The stock hit a high of 75 cents on those results. Um, the company did what a lot of companies do. I don't knock them for it. It announced the financing. The stock pulled back. The stock currently sits at 58 cents Canadian. It has assays pending. Um, you know, where they drilled it's extensions of, of old holes from BHP, you know, not, not, not some tiny junior miner that didn't do it correctly. So the results are pretty predictable. The geology is very well understood. And it, it, it would really surprise me if the next release didn't have another set of blockbuster assays, or at least very, very, very good numbers that, that send that stock much, much higher, um, you mentioned a gap having to be filled. We saw it go from 50 cents to, you know, the 91 cent level. And then it hit nearly the 80 cent level, 75 cents and pulled right back to 58 cents. Well, if they hit again, I think it's headed much higher. So one to keep on your radar, everybody. I like it. All right. Do we want to talk about these treasonous, seditious Republicans? You do. I haven't been following. So tell me what happened because it'll be news to me. Well, look, I said a couple of weeks ago during the election thing that I don't care if you voted Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, for Trump, against Trump, every vote should count. And if you don't believe that, you're an asshole is what I said. Go for easy. (laughs) And so, you know, what do I wake up to a few days ago? 126 Republicans are supporting a Texas lawsuit, a lawsuit um, from Texas asking the Supreme Court to overturn the results of the election. Now, they're not asking to throw out everybody's vote. Of course not. They are asking to throw out the vo- votes of states like Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Georgia. And I wonder why, right? And so, listen, I get it. They lost. Um this is bullshit. This is a bigger threat to this experiment that we call a democracy in America than all of the stuff that I hear the crazy extremists on both sides talk about when they talk about threats to America and threats to democracy. We can't be petitioning the Supreme Court to overturn election results that were certified by both major parties that were allowed to observe the vote. The Trump administration is like 0 and 50 or 1 and 50 in court. They're being laughed out of court and scolded by the same judges Trump appointed, Republican judges. 
And by the way, the Republicans aren't looking to overturn any results from states where they won, and they sure in the hell are not looking to overturn results, you know, from 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 the lower elections, right? Not the presidential ones, but 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 the the the, the House. And so, what are we doing here as a country, Nick? Like, it, does it is it is it me? Like, is this not crazy to you? We are throwing a tantrum is what we're doing. Um, and of course, with things having gotten so politicized um, and frankly, so many um, different narratives and untruths and mistruths and fake news um, that the people who are in office, frankly, stemming all the way back to the to the Tea Party and how that ran askew um, are dipshits. And so um, you get what you pay for, right? And you get who you vote into office. And um, I think we're seeing that being reflected now as, frankly, a, a low point, right? I.e. a crisis in American politics. And so um, it's all very laughable to me. Um, like I said, you know, I obviously knew about the Texas lawsuit and I saw the other states join and then I saw it get re- rejected. And I don't even know what day that was. It might have been today, in fact. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, that's that's but, 2020 in a nutshell. I think it was last week. Oh, no, it was this morning. <laughs> but I have followed along and I just view it as ridiculous, right? I sort of just um, graze right on by it. And um, what are we doing here? I don't know, Gerardo. Um, beating people up in the street, uh, running people over with cars. And now seeing that reflected in uh, our elected representatives. Um you know, if you can't run somebody over with a car and your mommy says no, you go run to daddy. And I think that's what's happening. Let me explain really quickly why this upsets me so much. It upsets me because we have some serious structural issues in this country that we need to address as a country from the top down, from the bottom up. And as long as we're wasting our time with frivolous lawsuits that have zero chance in hell of actually being reviewed, let alone being successful. Um, it just, it just throws me off, Nick. There's so many people that are hungry right now. You got kids that are just struggling with this remote learning stuff and, and, and are trying to make sense of it. And, and, and frankly, many that have wasted a year of productive teaching and schooling because the system is, you know, they're making it up as they go and and everybody's doing the best they can. Um, but it, it, (laughs) <laughs> we can agree to get more aid to small businesses while New York and California say and shut down again. New York just announced that indoor dining is, is once again, you know, being shut down. And again, no matter what you believe, whether you believe COVID-19 is a hoax, whether you think the vaccine has a chip implanted that's going to track you like your cell phone already does, whether you believe that you should take it, that you shouldn't take it, whatever your beliefs are. Everybody should have a shot at making a living. And if if I decide or you decide that we want to open our restaurant for indoor dining and we've taken the precautions that the government laid out months ago when they told us that if we just did A, B, and C and invested our hard-earned capital into those precautions, that we would be allowed to conduct business. If we follow all of that as business owners and the government then comes in and says, well, yeah, you spent that money, we're shutting it down again because... For whatever reason, I, I I I do have a problem with that. And mind you, I'm one of these people that hasn't dined indoors since March. That has been very cautious. Um, that that does believe COVID nineteen is real, though I also believe simultaneously that politicians are using it to 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 grab as much power um, as 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 they possibly can, as politicians always do. It's the nature of power, right? But it. it it's disheartening to see so many businesses go out of business and not given a chance, you know, a fighting chance to succeed. It's tough. It's tough to watch. And obviously certain sectors are more affected than others. The restaurants here in Spokane are getting decimated. We've been closed down for indoor dining, I think it's since November 17th or 18th. So what is that? Three weeks now we've been closed. Um, and restaurants are starting to shutter permanently. You see them take to, uh, Instagram for and plead their case and, and get people to, to line up. But it's it's tough. And, you know, uh, we've talked about the hunger and the, the, the demand at food banks um, on several issues. And, 
and we've donated to those causes. And, um, you know, I wouldn't expect the, the government to provide. It's sort of, you know, one of my shticks, right, is, you know, the individualism and the providing for yourself and caring for those you know, and your, your core network and, and those around you and helping pull them up but not relying on the, the government to do that for you. And so it's sort of all related, right? Um, you know, I'm here, I'm from the government and I'm here to help, right? And I think you'll see um, uh, a reverberation uh, away from that, right? You know, people seek the government help at certain times and they, and they push against the government help at other times. And um, I, I think you're going to see, and you know, I've said this many times, you know, a pushback from that um, nanny government, um, spying government, government providing government uh, benefits, et cetera, you know, towards the the individualism and 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 and, and the community. And um, I'm just going to tell you my dental hygienist story because it's on the list and it relates perfectly. But, you know, in a very real way, over the past decades, government has 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 put a stranglehold on, you know, uh, individual service people by making onerous uh, the 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 process to get licensed or outright making people get licensed that shouldn't like, you know, um, nail people, you know, salon people, for example. And, and you've read about this. We've talked about this. Um, so I went to the dentist this morning and um, this is going to fill up some time. So sorry, get your popcorn. I was talking to the, <laughs> dental, I was talking to the dental hygienist and it was her first day at this particular dentist office and she was having some issues, you know, setting up the x-ray machine the right way. And so we were talking over the course of my uh, appointment and uh I was asking her, well, you know, where she was from, if she was from Spokane. And she says, well, I was originally from Spokane, but now I live in Missoula. Mm. That's in Montana. Gerardo, yeah. I picked you up at the Missoula airport one time. I recall and, from a site visit. And that's correct. And so I'm thinking in my head, well, Missoula is three hours away. <laughs> what are you doing in the Spokane dentist office? And um, she drives the three hours every weekend and stays in the Ramada to work at this dentist, which is open Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, and then drives back Sunday evening and goes back to work at a at a dentist in in Missoula, three hours away over the mountain pass, does it every week, right? Hmm. Um, and so that's sort of like, you know, and I'm thinking about this as I'm sitting in my dentist chair, right, at 7.30 this morning. And, you know, um, you juxtapose that against the people who get the money, right? The, the, the corporations and the... Uh, the Black Rocks, et cetera. And it's like, you got this this lady with three kids who's got to drive three hours, well, six hours round trip every week across a, a snowy mountain pass to work the weekends so she can provide for her three kids, right? And uh, that's just sort of, I think, where we're at in the, in the system. And so um, I don't know where I was going with that. I just put that as a story I wanted to share. It's something I experienced this week, but I think it ties in uh, with what you're talking about a little bit, at least. No, absolutely. That's the point. That's the disconnect, right? Oracle is moving to Austin, right? And and they're going to get substantial tax savings as they should. Those are legal tax savings. I moved here for this, you know, for a similar reason. Um, though I was in Alaska, so you know, the savings wasn't 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 as big of an influence. The weather was, and the cold, and everything else that goes along with living in Alaska after living in Chicago. But um, you know, good for Oracle. But they get to just pivot move the corporate headquarters and, 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 and live great and live free and conduct businesses as, as usual. Meanwhile, you know, you have a situation where, you know, everyday hardworking Americans having to just literally not only lift themselves up from their bootstraps, you know, they're having to hold other boot people's bootstraps and their family up because certain sectors aren't allowed to continue to, 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 to be employed or to employ and, and there's something fundamentally wrong about that to me. And again, it doesn't diminish, nor am I trying to diminish the seriousness of COVID. Um, but people should have the, 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 the ability and opportunity um, to act responsibly, but, but, but choose. And, and now if you have you know, people out there that want to be completely irresponsible and expose people that are being responsible... Um, by that activity. And that's a different story. We could regulate that. But, you know, I, I don't think that the Biden administration's um, request that people wear masks for 100 days was unreasonable, given the fact that the trade-off was he could have mandated it. 
I, I think it's a reasonable approach. I'm not going to force you to do it, but I encourage you to do it. Be respectful of your neighbor. If you're going to be in indoor spaces, wear a mask, try to keep social distancing norms and, um, and just be a good citizen. That didn't seem crazy to me. That didn't seem like government overreach, but what New York is doing and what California is doing, that does. And it troubles me because right now it's because of COVID. What next, right? Well, that's it. It's a never let a crisis go to waste, right? And that's what worries you about government response, which is what worries me, of course. And I think you're starting to see more and more uh, pushback against that. And, and we'll see where it goes. And of course, we'll see where this virus goes. Uh, we got multiple vaccines on the way and a little amino precise up like 20 some percent today. Look at it go. Mm. Mm. What's that at now? I haven't looked at that in weeks. So it rolled back, right? Um, you're going to make me do math, but it rolled back five to one. <laughs> so it could go on the NASDAQ. And um, so now it's at about 12 bucks. So what's that put it at? You know, five, five fifty or whatever. Yeah. Uh, bef- um, uh, no, excuse me, two fifty before. Excuse me. And so um, it's been doing well, Gerardo. Excellent. It's been doing well. Good. Lucky squirrel. Hey. <laughs> Let's talk about the not so lucky. A couple of months back, we talked about my frustration with the local um, military camp here um, in Colleen, Texas, Fort Hood. There was a young lady um, that was murdered, Vanessa Guillen, um, who was murdered on base. Um, she was bludgeoned to death. Her body was chopped up. I uh, won't get into the other details. Pretty gruesome, pretty, pretty, pretty ugly stuff. Um, but, you know, this followed claims of discrimination and harassment and, and sexual harassment and assault. And, um, this week, 14 firings and suspensions from commanders and lower level leaders alike as a result of an investigation into that pattern of sexual assault, harassment, suicides, and murder at Fort Hood. Um, the gentleman that led that effort, uh, Mr. McCarthy said, I have determined the issues at Fort Hood are directly related to leadership failures. If you know anything about the military, you know it is not very keen um, to lay blame so directly on lower level or higher level um, personnel in this fashion. Um, He went on to say, I am gravely disappointed that leaders failed to effectively create a climate that treated all soldiers with dignity and respect and that failed to reinforce everyone's obligation to prevent and properly respond to allegations of sexual harassment and sexual assault. Um, Let's look at the numbers. Over a year and a half, two dozen sexual assault survivors came forward to say their allegations were brushed aside. Um, I believe over the past two years, there have been something like 26 deaths, either from homicide or suicide. Um, <laughs> that's a lot. That's a lot. And um, it worries me that it took this much to happen before we could even punish anybody. Um, ah, again, there's so much to do in this country on a fundamental level. And um, we're sitting here filing frivolous lawsuits to the Supreme Court instead of looking at stuff like this, right? Are they solving the murders, the firings, as I understand it? And I don't know anything about the story. I know you talked about it on previous you know, uh, podcasts, but I don't know anything besides what I've heard from you. So it sounds like the they're firing leadership for how what led up to how they were handling things leading up to these incidents and, and how they handled it in the wake of it. But are they solving the direct incidents themselves? Who's responsible for these uh, for these murders? <laughs> Year on year, there were 25 soldiers assigned to Fort Hood that died due to suicide, homicide, or accidents, right? 25. I don't know how many of those, and I'm I'm trying to look it up as I speak here, how many of those have been solved, but I know that the majority have not. Um, And so, you know, again, it just, we have to be better than this. We, We can't have you know, our, our young men and women signing up to serve and protect and then walking them literally to slaughter and not overseas, not in war, on on base. 
I mean, it, it, it just, again, I, it's for all the stuff that we're willing to go and, and stab each other about and shoot each other about, assault each other about, and, you know, all of that frivolous stuff that's just meant to entertain and divide. This is the stuff that every American, I don't care which party you, you identify with, or if you identify with a party, should be up in arms about, literally up in arms about. Um, and the fact that it took this much, it just, it, it worries me for, for, for our young people. I mean, I, I, my oldest is 22 years old. He completed, you know, his, his Marine training was certified past all the, the, the written physical and psychological tests. And, and, you know, right at the last minute, this was a couple of years ago. Um, he decided he, he didn't trust, you know, the leadership enough to, 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 to actually enlist, you know, and this was after he put himself through like six, seven months of intense, intense training. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and in hindsight, man, I'm so thankful, but it, it, it pains me a bit to think that, you know, I, I, I would have supported him wanting to serve his country in that manner and represent his country in that manner. Um, and, and then that I may have been handing him over to an environment like this, which two years ago, it wasn't, it wasn't as public that this was going on. It's when it was happening. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's easy to wave. It's easy to wave the flag. It's easy to put your hand over your heart and stand up, but there's uh, a lot of issues uh, in the military from what and, you're talking about all the way to, to veterans, right? Which has been a big issue as well. Yeah. Atrocious. Yeah. yeah. So if, 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 if from, from the, from the onset, from when our young men and women go report to boot camp, they're, they're in danger and they're in danger from their own commanders and, and, and the leadership in place. And, when the, and we then send those young men and women off to war, and obviously they're in danger there. And if they're fortunate enough to make it back, they may or may not have, you know, some psychological traumas that they need to work through now or some physical traumas that they need to work through now. And man, do we do a piss poor job of that as well here in this country. And so again, save your flyovers where the pretty planes go over the pretty skies and they do the pretty patterns. Do that after you've invested every dollar to make sure that our soldiers, our veterans are being treated with the utmost dignity from beginning to end. Spare me the pins, spare me the flyovers, spare me the fake outrage over Colin Kaepernick wanting to have a discussion about police brutality in this country. Spare me all of that until you're as mad about this and we're doing something to fix this system as you're upset about the other stuff that doesn't really matter until then. I think, you know, it's all hypocrisy and bullshit. Mm -hmm. That's it. I'll stop there. The market's at all time awesome. highs though. Hey, record highs. <laughs> Everything is awesome. Rake it in. Smoke them. If you got them. That's it. Um, are we going to talk about the, the, the antitrust lawsuit that, and again, Mr. Dines was ahead of this, right? He, he's been calling this for years. He said that, you know, the states were going to get together and and sue the Facebooks and Googles of the world. And we're starting to see that. Did you want to speak to that a bit at all? Is this a trend that continues? I think it is a trend. I think it's been brewing for a while. I've written a bit about it in the past. And uh, you can see it in the testimony that it, you and I discussed a couple of weeks ago. Or again, time is irrelevant now. But whenever they were testifying <laughs> on, on the Hill recently. Um, yeah, everything from... Uh, the ads that you see served up on Facebook um, uh, to the way they limit uh, people's speech and the way they serve as uh, platforms uh, and, and how big they've grown, especially in the case of uh, Google and Amazon. I definitely think that this is a trend that continues as part of uh, the fourth turning. And as you see, um, that distrust between individuals and corporations and institutions and governments uh, grow to its maximum width before it starts to retreat again. That's exactly what comes with it, right? The people uh, against the government, the people against the institutions and the people against um, uh, the corporations that, that frankly um, are the largest heads at the, of the snake of this, of, of corporatism. Right. And so it's par for the course of, 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 of where we're at in the, in the cycle of all things. But it's going to be okay. Right. Because we might get another $600 for those that qualify. And, um, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's going to be okay. 
I mean, groceries are going to be really expensive, right? Um, other things, real estate are going to be really expensive. You talked about people getting priced out of the market, having to make offers above uh, asking price, multiple offers above asking price. I mean, the other flip side of the coin of that is homelessness, right? And so, mm. um, you know, um, if housing is out of reach and the inventory is such that there's there's not enough to, to sate or satiate demand, then... Um, you know, I drive to the office every day and, and I see it every single day. I drive by the church where, and you know, there's a line a hundred long every morning. I drive over the overpass where they're handing out soup in the, in the evening and the lines are long and long and long. And so, um, yeah, I mean, best of times, worst of times. That's how it is. It is. And again, I say it, I think almost every week, if you're fortunate, fortunate enough to be in a position to help, please do so. I mean... You know, if you can spend 300 bucks on drinks over a weekend at a nice hotel and restaurant, nothing wrong with that. Um, but if you can tip 50% to make sure that your waiter or waitress, um, you know, has a decent day because it's tough out there, do so. You know, if 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 if, if you can help somebody um, in any way, do so because it's a privileged position um, to be in good shape in this economy. It's tough for most people. So we're shut down for indoor dining now. So what uh, <laughs> the the better restaurants are doing is, uh, you know, it's snowy here and it's winter. So they have these like clear vinyl igloos that can fit a table inside with four or five people around it. Um, and you can basically rent out these igloos. I'm, there's a couple of restaurants in town that have them and they have like a minimum, right? So if you can go in there and drop, I think the one minimum I saw was like 300 bucks, right? If you can go in there and drop, like you just said, 300 bucks to sit in this igloo. I mean, um, it, it's that two Americas, right? It's like basically indoor dining isn't shut down if you can rent the igloo for 300 bucks. And I'm starting to see it. I think I was talking about this last week, even. Yep. I'm starting to see it more and more in social media comments, yep. uh, et cetera, just infighting amongst the community, right? Like, you know, a restaurant will post, um, look at our new uh outdoor dining and the very first comment is like that's indoor dining outside right i mean you know that's it's it's very interesting to watch it's you know we spoke to it a bit last week when we talked about dave Chappelle and the comedy show and the joe rogan show here that they're throwing the residency you know 30 shows 10 days three shows a day something along those lines and you know what if you had enough money for those tickets and you were lucky enough to to, to be in the queue beforehand um, and you can afford and you press the button, right? And you press the right button. God darn it. <laughs> um, then, you know, you, 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 you could have, you, you could have scored some tickets to go to that show, see one of the better comedians that I've ever seen, um, uh, in Dave Chappelle and, and a very insightful Joe Rogan and funny Joe Rogan. You, you, you would have arrived. You would have taken a COVID test. You would have had your results within 10 minutes and you would have been guaranteed that everybody in that venue, an outdoor venue, mind you, um, was COVID free and you would have had a great time. You could have ate some of the best food and some yummy Texas barbecue and have a great beer, a great vodka soda, as I like. And, uh, you know, just had an absolute blast. And, you know, across uh, across the river, you would have seen tents, tent cities full of homeless people that, you know, are just hoping that the generosity of people um, gets them through the holidays. Indeed, to Americas. That's it. That's it. Um, I know you wanted to talk GMC. How is your truck? Did you want to talk about your no, truck at all? No. Not not in this <laughs> tone. No, I'll wait until the tone is different. <laughs> we'll leave that for another week. Um, what to look forward to? Look, we have the holidays coming up. A lot of people are getting ready to basically be done for a couple of weeks, right? I think this next following week is the last week that most companies um, with their finger on the pulse will be releasing any material news. And then and then it's after New Year's. I mentioned K2 Gold. I hope for some results this coming week. Nevada Sunrise Gold and New Plasterdome Gold. I hope for results this week. Um, and if not, it's after New Year's. Are there any companies on your radar, Nick, that you are watching for potentially results um, this coming week or news? This coming week, I'm scrolling my list, Gerardo. I'm scrolling my list. So we haven't mentioned Magna. I'm not sure they have any news pending. We got some decent results from La Pima recently, but just dramatically undervalued as it relates to the development of San Francisco and the uh, suite of assets they have nearby and coming behind it. 
Um, what else is on the list? What else is on the list, Gerardo? Um, we'll get I'm, another slug of results from Chicana. I think I read in somebody's newsletter today before the holiday. Um, might have been your newsletter. I think it was. Yes, and sir. So I would look That's forward to that. And um, update on Chicana really quick. I don't mean sure. to break your train of thought here, but I, I had mentioned that there was a short against Chicana for the past several weeks. I was informed yesterday um, by by a very influential person in the sector that placed the call to the firm that was shorting the company 500 shares at a time for the past month plus, it seemed like. Um, and they are out of shares. So it would not surprise me to see Chicana release some results if they're good the way they have been. They've been great, frankly. Um, it would not surprise me to see real appreciation in the market um, for good results. Cause man, they've been hitting. They absolutely have been hitting multiple metals in, uh, very high grades. No, I think that's about it, Gerardo. The only one, and I'm not sure when the hole is going to be done in assayed, but, um, Aguila is poking that hole in Oregon and, um, that story is really good. We'll see if the rocks cooperate. The share structure is fantastic. Um, I agree with that. Two other ones, one, maybe a Christmas present. Um, let's hope it's not full of coal. That would be almond and minerals. There is still the potential for Semarnat to issue a decisive and hopefully positive permitting decision at Ixtaca. That is one that is severely undervalued. You got people that don't believe they will be able to secure that permit. I happen to take the other side of that. The market will tell and my pocketbook will be better off or less. So as a result of it, um, and then Regulus, you know, Regulus suspended its drilling a few weeks back, but it completed, it nearly completed two holes all the way down to 800 plus meters. The last news release referenced that there was mineralization in both of those holes, substantial mineralization. So I am curious to see what that looks like at that target, because I believe drilling will resume in short order by the end of the month. And I believe those issues will be sorted out because I think a lot like the Almaden issues, um, they're not real issues. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Time will tell. I thought of a good one while you were talking. You'll get your money's worth right here at the end. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, Hold on, drum roll. Critical elements lithium hmm. because they have the paper coming free trading uh, Christmas week. I think it's like Christmas Eve. In fact, I'd have to go check my paperwork, but I think that what's August, September, October, I think the financing closed uh, August 24th. And so um, those shares have more than doubled and there will be some sellers I would imagine. And so you'll have an opportunity um, if you like, because there hasn't been for the past two months, probably to buy uh, critical elements a little cheaper uh, than it's been. It ran all the way to a dollar. It's pulled back just below 80 cents here. Um, I would be buying any softness. Once that paper comes due, just wait two weeks, right? Um, and then I would imagine that heading into the new year, you get a, 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 a resumption of that upward trend. A lot of resumptions, I think, are happening in January. Nick, in the meantime, I wish everybody all the best. Be kind to each other. Stay safe. I am Gerardo Del Real, along with Mr. Nick Hodge. This was episode 97 of Bizarro World. Nick, say goodbye for us. See ya. Back it up.